One Thursday, at 7 in the evening, we visited Santerem port. From here, the legally processed timber leaves for such disparate destinations as Rotterdam, Madrid, or Barcelona. The states of Pará and Amazonas alone exported close to $325 million worth of timber by means of boats like this. Often, the apparently legal cargo is a blatant fraud. We come here to work during the six months of summer, day and night, non-stop. There are six shifts. And this is not the only sawmill. There are many illegal sawmills here in Santarem. We get the wood out in one cubic meter cardboard boxes with a false bottom where we put the wood. We leave the legal timber outside, but the precious wood goes inside the false bottom. The noble wood goes inside. So, what leaves in the boat are actually two meters, one normal cubic meter and a meter of noble wood. 64 species are most sought after for their precious wood. Ipe, Latoba, Sicupira, Jacaranda, Itauba, Mahogany. All at the mercy of a voracious industry that has brought them to the verge of extinction. Once again, its beauty is the greatest sin that the Amazon has to pay for. From its rivers, the trees were born, and now their skeletons float along them. Many of the 2,500 logging companies that work in the Amazon do so illegally, and only a few are caught red-handed. This is the case of one of them. They were transporting an illegal load of several hundred trees from the Javari River Valley one night when they were intercepted by the Brazilian Environmental Institute. The trees are already dead. They no longer make a forest. Imagine the enormous gap they must have left in the forest they came from. The extraction of this product was not authorized. No studies were made on the environmental impact. And for that reason, we stopped it. Right now we are on top of several species, such as the Samauma, Ferrol, Samarambauba, Copaiba. There are some of the species used by companies that make laminating and particle boards. Normally this wood goes out at a price of less than $11 from the riverside dealer to the buyer, and an average of $45 from this middleman to the industrialist. After the whole process, this wood will finally reach a price of $215 in the laminating industry. This is a batch of approximately 25,000 cubic meters of wood that was cut illegally on the banks of the Perus and Hurua rivers, which are tributaries of the Solimois River. Brazil believes that its wealth in timber is a legitimate source of income, and it's within its rights. But it should still learn something about the sustainable exploitation of its forests. This is a good place to start, very close to Manaus, at the only company that a Greenpeace report calls exemplary from an ecological point of view. It's also profitable. Of Swiss origin, the directors of this logging company, permanently established in Brazil since 1994, view the wood business as a whole. That is, the extraction and sale of timber is only profitable if the ecosystem does not suffer, and as long as regenerative methods and policies are pursued. Usually, the Amazon forest is bought very cheap and ends up costing a lot. Incomprehensibly, around here, the tree is not what matters most. For the loggers, these living beings only have value once they are chopped down and piled up. Mil Madereira is a different kind of logging company, based on respect for the tree, its delicate nature, 
and the complicated natural processes that make it grow. A sustainable and scientific way of doing lasting business. A modern industry that struggles to open a path in the midst of the corrupt market of every man for himself. This is a sustainable project whose raw material is the forest. Here too the chainsaws roar, but for each felled tree, three new ones are planted. The Mil Madereira wood business sells 70,000 cubic meters a year, but in this same period, it regenerates 40,000 of important species for the forest and for Brazil's coffers. Before cutting a tree, they study the consequences of this amputation on the rest of the landscape. The first thing we do is make this hole in the tree to see if it is hollow inside. Our studies show that a tree with a 70 centimeter diameter can have a hollow up to 12 centimeters. If it is larger than that, then the tree will not be cut and will simply stay with this hole which will disappear in 15 or, or 20 days. It will close again. This other cut made on the sides is called the albumen cut. This is the youngest part of the tree. On cutting it, tensions are eliminated, so we prevent the tree from splintering when it falls. This line here marks the part we call the hinge, which goes around the breadth of the tree, thus preventing a precipitated fall and sustaining the tree as it falls. So it falls very slowly, preventing accidents involving the operator who is not caught by surprise. On its properties, this sawmill in Itacoatiara shows how natural resources can be exploited by man in an intelligent manner. An international body, the Council for Forestal Administration, backs this new philosophy of exploitation. All of the wood traded here is certified by the FSC, and thus consumers know that the wood flooring or the furniture in their living room comes from an industry that respects the environment. The immense wealth of the Amazon is a scarce commodity, and it must be treated like that. Okay, this map. Here we are on the main highway. And this is the trail the trees are dragged along. All the trees that have numbers and codes have been selected to be cut. For example, we have just finished cutting this one, 341, and the next we will cut is number 143, which in this case is a black laurel. Got it? Here we work in a cycle of closed cutting, that is, we start in a determined area and each year we advance until we complete the 25-year cycle and return again to the area we left. To get a tree out of the forest, we use a 70-meter steel cable. In that way, we minimize the use of heavy machinery in the forest. After the timber is collected, we study ways to make use of the resource that allows the forest to regenerate, thus optimizing natural production over that of commercial species. We have just shown you the only logging company in the Amazon that follows conservationist criteria. So nobody can say that things can't be done differently. Only in this way will today's forest continue to be tomorrow's living. <laughs> 